I want to begin by speaking about Tom Cruise, <laughs> because he is someone who demands such a high standard of, from every department. I mean, as a sort of director, when you're on a set and you've got someone like that who cares so much and goes so far and beyond to make sure that this project is as brilliant as it has proven to be, that must be so such a great help for, for you it to is. have that kind no, of support. No, uh, that attitude is infectious, you know. The whole crew feels it and everyone strives to kind of deliver their best work. So yeah, it's great to have on set. Of course, I mean, imagine you would have seen this, sort of, <laughs> the, the, the original film sort of all those, all those years ago. Did you ever envisage that one day you'd be on the set of the sequel? <laughs> not when, not when I saw it, certainly mm. not. No, I saw it as a 12-year-old kid and just, you know, had the same reaction that everyone else did, which was fun film, great character, great music. You know, it was all over the radio that year. And uh, yeah, never really thought I would be able to work on it until Jerry Bruckheimer sent me an early version of the script about five years ago. And that was, you know, the first step of many to get to this point. So you've known all those five years that this was a, this was a project you were going to eventually be, be helming? Well, I didn't know that until Jerry and I traveled to Paris to kind of pitch Tom on the idea of the film. And uh, at the end of that meeting, Tom picked up the phone and called Paramount and said, we're making this movie. And at that point, I was like, I guess I'm doing it, um, which is crazy. So how tough was that balance in giving the fans that injection of nostalgia they want? So there's little moments and sequences that, that hark back to the original and yet create something that's completely new and original and modern as well. Was that quite a t tough sort of balance to get right? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's about capturing the feeling of what I had when I saw it for the first time. Um, so we didn't want to make a cover band version of the film. We're not aping, you know, shot by shot. Uh, but at the same time, we want people to feel like they're going back into the Top Gun universe. So I think in the first few minutes, you definitely feel that. Uh, but then very quickly, the story goes in its own direction, and we see that it's a new journey for Maverick. There's a lot of new characters, and it's going to be its own story. And I guess how important was it? I mean, obviously, there's always pressure on a movie like this to, to appease the kind of the fans, but also to honor Tony Scott's legacy as well. And I was wondering, too, if there was any sort of specific looks inspired by Tony that you wanted to, to bring into this. Uh, definitely. No, I mean, Tony set the look for the universe. So, you know, like I said, we wanted our film to exist in that same place. Uh, you know, and that means shooting at sunset. You know, there's a couple shots where we use those sunset grads, which are those filters that Tony would put on the lens to give it that Top Gun look. So you'll see, you know, little touches and homages throughout um, to Tony. But at the same time, we also knew we had to innovate on our own and, and give it a, a, a look and that, that would stand on its own. I know Tom was keen to get all of the kind of cast to do all the, the flight pilot training and stuff like that. Did you ever get up in a plane with, with Tom or anyone? Or was, did you ever did you get to experience that I side I didn't of get things? to experience the F-18, which uh, I've been invited to uh, now that the film's over and COVID's over. So I hope to get that opportunity soon. But yeah, Tom, Tom would take me up in his plane a couple of times. He'd fly me back and forth to set with him, which was pretty cool. I mean, it feels like with Tom Cruise, he feels like one of the last true movie stars. I mean, look, there's, there's hundreds of brilliant movie stars still on the planet, but there's something about him that has this kind of throwback to being a specific breed of movie star that doesn't really exist anymore. Um, I'm just wondering if it's almost, do you worry a little bit for the future of the kind of blockbuster in the sense that obviously Tom Cruise is sort of getting older. Stuff, and it feels like who's going to be the next Tom Cruise? Do you feel like Top Gun is a film that, do you think we could see many more films like Top Gun Maverick is what I'm saying? I mean, I think you see in this film, Tom is kind of mentoring a bunch of young actors about, you know, how he got the career he has and how to make movies that entertain an audience. So I think with this film, he's, he's actually teaching the next generation how to do it. So I'm, I'm not worried about the future of blockbusters. I think, you know, the movies like this will hopefully inspire an, another generation and we'll keep doing it. And just very fine. I mean, is there any scope for a, another Top Gun film potentially one day, do you think? Uh, we're just trying to get this one out. Obviously, this took five years. It comes out in a couple of weeks, so we'll see. We'll see what audiences think. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your cool. time. I much appreciate nice it. Nice to meet you. you. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!